Okay, so Pasco's uh, speed of light apparatus. Um, let's go through how to set this up and then we'll talk about strategies for fine tuning the alignment uh, to give you the best results. So uh, the components that come in the kit, uh, the positions of them are described in the uh, user guide in terms of where to place them on the optics bench um, and what centimeter mark to align them to. So uh, the mirror starts at the front edge of it at the 17 centimeter mark here. <clears throat> so 17 centimeters from the back of the optics bench. The 252 millimeter focal length lens here is at the 62.2 centimeter mark. Uh, the front edge of this measuring microscope housing goes at the 82 centimeter mark. Um, and then this last lens, which is a 48 millimeter focal length lens, goes at the 93 centimeter mark. So now, um, you have it a 94, but... oh, is it? How did it get there? <laughs> That's weird. Let's move that. No wonder it was so fuzzy. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> with the components in place, um, there's also this handout also calls for the use of calibrated polarizers, but we're going to leave those off for just a second and I'll show you how we'll use those in a minute. Okay, so the laser sits on this laser bench in the back here and then there's a foot underneath here um, that you can use to raise and lower the back end of the track to help adjust the beam alignment um, so we can hit the sweet spot before we start making measurements. Um, and so when you first set this up, what you want to do is get all your components on the track, um, turn the rotating mirror, well actually I should say um, this rotating mirror comes with a housing that covers the top of it like this. Um, remove these two thumb screws. Here's one of the thumb screws right here. So you remove these two thumb screws, take the lid of the housing off, and then there's also a plastic thumb screw in the back here that is used to lock the flywheel on the bottom of that motor. Uh, before you turn this mirror on, make any measurements, make sure this has been loosened so the flywheel can rotate freely and you can reach through a hole in the top here to move the flywheel back and forth to make sure that it moves freely. Uh, okay, so what I do is I, I get all the optics on the track um, and the first thing I want to make sure is that the lenses are seated right in the centers of these lens holders. You know, you can look through the back here through the square opening and make sure that, that each of these lenses is centered. The beam splitter on the microscope housing sits at a 45 degree angle uh, relative to the surface normal um, like the tabletop surface normal to the tabletop um, and then adjust the flywheel so the back of the mirror is facing out and I do this as a precautionary measure because as you align it there is a laser beam in play here and you know if the mirror was rotated improperly the beam can be stray hit someone in the eye we don't want to do that so align the laser beam so it does its best to go through the centers of the two lenses as well as land, most importantly, land right in the center of that mirror that's rotated backward, okay? And you can do that by adjusting the foot on the back here of this laser stage. So you can adjust the angle the laser enters the system. Um, once the beams align on the back of that mirror, go ahead and turn the, you put your finger down to the flywheel and turn the mirror around so it faces out and then send the beam off that mirror down to uh, the fixed mirror some distance away. Ours is probably about 12 or 13 meters away. Um, so the, the, that flat mirror is not, excuse me, that fixed mirror is not a flat mirror. It's actually a concave mirror that has a really long focal length. So having the mirror some distance away actually helps the experiment work a little better. The idea is the beam goes down from this rotating mirror, hits that fixed mirror, and then comes back to our optics and lands again on this rotating mirror exactly where it left from. Uh, we adjust the mirror here um, using the two screws on the back in order to send the beam 
right back to where JJ is pointing. Um, and then if, you, if I put my hand over to the beam right here, you can see that the laser is, in fact, hitting the mirror. So there you are. Oh. And uh, using this type of stand is best because it makes it really easy to adjust the mirror, to adjust the height, and to move it around to get it to where it needs to be. Um, the tripod stand does not come with the kit, but um, it is a camera stand that you can find. Okay, so once you've got the fixed mirror in place and you've aligned the beam so that it leaves this rotating mirror, hits the fixed mirror, and comes back and lands exactly in the center of the rotating mirror again, you should be good. So the alignments on the bench, are, excuse me, the optics on the bench are aligned, beam goes down to the fixed mirror, you've adjusted the fixed mirror so that the beam returns and lands again on the rotating mirror in the same place that it left. Okay, and with this beam splitter in the microscope housing set to 45 degrees if you put a piece of tissue over the opening here oh and i should say this eyepiece comes assembled like this you can loosen this black thumb screw and this piece comes out and this will help with alignment you put a piece of tissue over the top there and you can see the beam coming up through the microscope housing and you know it's the right beam if you block the beam in between the two mirrors this spot disappears and reappears when you do that. So you'll notice when I block it, there's still a small amount of red sort of fuzz there. What we care about is that bright spot right there. Okay, and you can adjust this lens right here, the position of it, and just slightly forward or backward, and it will sharpen or make smaller that spot in the, in the housing. Okay, and so before I put the eyepiece back in, what I'm gonna do is adjust the beam splitter and then adjust this micrometer. So the spot appears to come right back through the center of that opening where I'm gonna put the eyepiece back in. Okay. So now I'm gonna take these polarizers. And I'm gonna put them, well, first of all, I'm gonna mount them on the stand and then adjust the angles between them. Oops. So they're not the same. So it helps dampen the beam a little bit so it's not too bright. Because I'm about to look through this eyepiece and I don't want to hurt my eye. So I'll put that back in place and I'll look in. Right. So if you look in there, you'll see the spot. Mm -hmm. there it is. And so if I block this beam. That's so how we know it's the right spot. All right, so now turn the rotating mirror on. 
and we just push the stunt button and move the polarizers. Can you explain why you're adjusting? Yeah, so the, there's a reticle in this eyepiece, right? And it makes a cross. And I'm adjusting the beam splitter and the micrometer to move the spot right into the center. That way, so if I want to show somebody, it's easy to point out what spot to say, look right in the middle. And now I'm just going to adjust this. So if you look in there, it kind of looks like a red blob, but there is a tiny bright spot right in the center, there. That bright spot, right there, that bright spot is the one that's gonna move. So I'm gonna adjust the reticle just a little bit to make it square. And so I'll adjust the micrometer right there. And so when we speed the rotating mirror up, the spot is gonna move, its position is gonna change. So I'm gonna press and hold. And then the other, yeah, just like that. Press and hold. And you see its position start to change. Mm -hmm. And then once it's there, we adjust the micrometer to move it back to where it started. And we record the micrometer reading right now. And then, yep, we record the micrometer reading. And then go back. Looking there again. Okay, now I'm going to change the direction. So it's going to slow down. And then it's going to disappear for a split second. And then it's going to start spinning the other way. It comes back. And now I'm going to spin this up again to its maximum resolution. And now we have to move the micrometer go down yep back until it's back in its original position okay and then stop and then read the micrometer and the new micrometer reading we'll take the new micrometer reading and the old micrometer reading and can find the delta s prime value by taking the difference between those two positions and then we can use that to calculate the speed of light cool Thank you.